Luffy and his crew also relied on Buggy's guidance to make their way to Nami's hometown. Buggy's bodily is still in Arlong Park and he has to follow Luffy's orders. On the other side, Garp arrived at the Baratai to inquire about Luffy's whereabouts. Zeph, deliberately, used the allure of fine cuisine to buy some time. He also informed Garp that the future belonged to the younger generation. However, Garp eventually learned about Luffy's movements from others and immediately led a team to capture him. Meanwhile, Luffy and his crew reached Nami's hometown, Kokoyasi Village. Known for its abundant orange groves, they discovered that Nami had been forced by Arlong to collect tribute from the village. Arlong had dominion over many villages, demanding payment from each one, which led to Nami being despised by the villagers. Upon seeing Luffy, Nami displayed an unusual coldness, insisting that he should leave promptly. She then returned to Arlong Park. Currently, Arlong was causing havoc in the East China Sea, and he has even bribed a marine colonel named Nozumi. Luffy subsequently met Genzo and Nami's sister, Nojiko. Nojiko revealed Nami's past. Years ago, Nami and Nojiko were adopted by the Navy officer Belmere and enjoyed a modest yet joyful life together. One day, the Arlong pirates occupied Kokoyasi village for colonization and exploitation, demanding hefty sums of money from everyone. However, the impoverished Belmere did not have enough money, as she had spent it all on Nami and Nojiko. Belmere faced Arlong alone and was killed by him. Nojiko, vi voglio bene, ragazzo. Later, for reasons unknown, Nami joined the Arlong pirates, leading everyone to despise her. Luffy believed that Nami must have a hidden reason for her actions and chose not to leave but rather to seek answers from her. Meanwhile, Nami tells Arlong that she has collected 100 million bell. It turned out that Nami and Arlong had a secret agreement. Arlong had recognized Nami's navigational skills and used the lives of the villagers as leverage to make her draw navigational charts for him. Keeping her confined to a room, Nami had made a pact with Arlong that if she collected 100 million bell, she could buy Kokoyasi village from him. This was the reason behind Nami's relentless pursuit of treasure. She carried the burden of her entire hometown on her shoulders since childhood. In fact, Nami cherishes her time with Luffy and the gang so much that if it weren't for her village, she might have stayed in going merry. Now that Nami has finally collected 100 million bell, it seemed like she could save her village. Nojiko learned about Nami's years of sacrifice and reconciled with her. However, Arlong had secretly conspired with Captain Nozumi. Colonel Nozumi laughs that Nami is a pirate and sends his men to rob Nami of his money. Nami's despair at the loss of her years of hard work is instantaneous. Nami looked at the tattoo of the fishman pirates on her arm and stabbed herself to remove the mark of humiliation. Luffy stepped in and stopped Nami, remaining silent. Initially, Nami coldly asked Luffy to leave. However, Luffy didn't speak and looked at Nami seriously. Finally, Nami took off her tough disguise and asked Luffy to help her. Luffy, aiutami. So, Luffy entrusted Nami with his most precious possession, the straw hat, and gathered all his crewmates to confront Arlong. Andiamo. Hey. Meanwhile, Kokoyasi village was engulfed in flames because Arlong sought revenge on Nami by attacking the village. Now, all the villagers knew Nami's story and decided to rise up against Arlong. Luffy tells the villagers that this is their fight. Then he led his four companions to kill Arlong's park. On the other hand, Garp also came to this area. He not only called Colonel Nozumi for questioning, but also prepared to capture Luffy. Simultaneously, a major battle was underway in Arlong Park. Buggy took advantage of the chaos to find his own body and promptly made his escape. Usopp faced off against the fishman officer Chu. Usopp dodges the attack by playing dead and defeats him with a gunpowder star. Meanwhile, Zoro and Sanji dealt with a group of fishmen and Kurubi. Although they enjoyed their verbal sparring, they were formidable in combat. Sanji defeated Kurubi with a stylish series of kicks. On the other hand, Luffy arrives at Nami's former cell and is enraged at what he sees. 
Luffy even crushed Arlon's weapon, the two of them then engaged in a showdown. Luffy displayed his immense strength by shattering Arlon's teeth with a single punch, but Arlon was able to restore his teeth instantly. At that moment, Luffy began attacking the entire building, aiming to destroy Nami's painful past and Arlon's navigational charts. This sent Arlon into a state of panic. Luffy also unleashed his Gatling laser gun, sending Arlon flying. <laughs> At this moment, Arlon Park was on the verge of collapse, and Arlon decided to settle the score with Luffy in a final showdown. Luffy, on the other hand, raised his leg high and unleashed his ultimate move, the rubber axe. Gah, gah! In the end, Luffy's kick defeated Arlong and demolished Arlong Park. Luffy then appeared amidst the ruins and shouted to Nami. Nami! Tu sei nostra amica! Noi siamo la tua ciurma! <laughs> Arlon's reign of terror finally came to an end, and Kokoyasi village celebrated with a grand feast. Suddenly, Karp and his troops surrounded the area and ordered the arrest of the Straw Hat Pirates. Unexpectedly, Kobe and Helmeppo stepped forward to oppose Garp. They declared Luffy a hero who had saved Kokoyasi village, emphasizing that the real culprits were the Arlon Pirates. However, Garp paid no heed to Kobe and even personally called out Luffy, violently confronting his own grandson. Allora fammi vedere cosa sai fare. Luffy was no match for Garp at this point. Regardless of the attack he used, Garp could easily defeat him with a single punch. Garp seized Luffy and pressured him to give up being a pirate. Even in the face of Garp, Luffy refused to abandon his dream. At that moment, Garp saw shades of G.O.L.D., Roger and Luffy, and he burst into laughter, releasing Luffy. It turned out that all of this had been Garp's test for Luffy. Garp let Luffy and his crew go and instead went after the Arlong pirates. Even Marine Colonel Nozomi was knocked down by Nami with a single blow. Finally, Garp told Luffy that from now on, he would have to rely on himself. Luffy responded with a smile, saying that he still had his friends. Satisfied, Garp left Kokoyasi village. The next day Nami said goodbye to Nojiko at Belmere's grave and she left an orange windmill for Belmere. Meanwhile, Luffy met with Kobe, and they remained friends. Kobe presented Luffy with a bounty poster. Sono parecchi barri. È la taglia più alta nel mare orientale. Sei un ricercato adesso. È esattamente quello che volevo. Luffy now had his own wanted poster, with a bounty of 30 million berries, the highest in the East China Sea. Usopp's silhouette appeared in the corner of the wanted poster. Soon, the news of the wanted poster spread throughout the East China Sea. Machino was thrilled for Luffy, while Kaya saw Usopp in the poster. Zeph proudly displayed the wanted poster in the restaurant, and Buggy decided to join forces with Alvita to go after Luffy. Meanwhile, Garp took Kobe and Helmeppo as his apprentices. Acknowledging their pursuit of justice, he also mused that the future might indeed belong to the younger generation. On the other side, the inebriated red hair pirates unexpectedly received an uninvited guest, Myhawk. Myhawk, who had clashed with Shanks multiple times in the past, had brought Luffy's wanted poster as a special delivery. This makes the red hair pirates happy to start the party again and invite Myhawk to join them. On Luffy's side, they planted orange trees on the ship for Nami. Nami and the others also prepared a gift for Luffy, the straw hat pirate's flag. Spiega la vela! Spiego la vela! And so, the Straw Hat Pirates had their own flag. Luffy set sail on the going merry towards the Grand Line. At this point, they proposed to hold a departure ceremony. Everyone placed their feet on a barrel and spoke of their dreams. Io troverò il grande blu. 
Io diventerò il re dei pirati! Io sarò il più forte spadaccino di sempre. Io disegnerò una mappa del mondo. Io diventerò un coraggioso guerriero del mare! <ride> Noi non permetteremo a niente di fermarci! This concludes the first season of the live action adaptation of One Piece, comprising all eight episodes. If you enjoyed the One Piece video, remember to like and subscribe. I'm not sure how many stars you would give to this live action series, but personally, I'm satisfied with its performance. The casting for the main characters generally aligns well with the original, and the scene design and character appearances are faithful to the source material. While there have been some plot adaptations, overall, they fall within an acceptable range. Additionally, the music and special effects are well executed. One of the standout moments was the performance of the Sea King. However, the action scenes could be improved, and there were some dry moments in the emotional aspects. All I can say is, keep up the good work. Finally, please give a thumbs up and subscribe, it truly means a lot to me. Thank you, and let's meet again soon. Goodbye.